Hi, folks. Eli Rosen here with Senator Baldwin's office. We're going to give it just one more minute as uh, we're seeing folks continue to roll in. Thanks for the patience. All right, I think we're at critical mass. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Eli Rosen, and I am with Senator Baldwin's office. We help moderate the discussion. Senator Baldwin is joined by Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation CEO and Secretary Nissy Hughes, CEO of BioFor Lisa Johnson, and CEO of Rockwell Automation Blake Moret uh, for today's call. In a moment, I will hand it over to Senator Baldwin to kick things off. But first, want to go over a few housekeeping items quickly. After the panelists speak, we will open it up to press for on-topic questions. To ask questions, please use the Zoom Q&A chat function. If you have any follow-up questions after the press conference, please feel free to email us at press at baldwin.senate.gov. You're welcome to re record this conversation on a third-party application. However, you will not be able to through your Zoom app. Following the meeting, our office will send around a full recording of the press conference to all attendees. Uh, now, without further ado, I will pass it off to Senator Baldwin. Greetings. I want to start by thanking uh, Missy Hughes, the Secretary and CEO of the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, uh, Blake Moret, CEO of Rockwell Automation, and Lisa Johnson, CEO of BioForward, for joining us today. Their participation really helps demonstrate that getting to this point was a team effort. Securing a tech hub for Wisconsin is just one example of what we're able to accomplish when private and public partners come together to move our economy, workforce, and state forward. This morning, the Department of Commerce officially announced that Wisconsin had been awarded $49 million to help develop and implement a biohealth tech hub in the Badger State. Out of nearly 200 initial applications, Wisconsin will be just one of 12 that was selected for final designation and funding. In line with Wisconsin tradition, this tech hub will be innovative, it'll be collaborative, and it will move us forward. Collaboration has really been the secret sauce that made our bid for a tech hub successful, and I'm confident it will be the key to our success moving forward. As a member of the Senate Commerce Committee that wrote the Chips and Science Act, I knew this idea of regional technology hubs had to be in the bill. The vision for the tech hubs was, not, uh, was to not only help places in the U.S. grow their economies in up and coming fields, but also to help the United States compete on the global stage. The tech hub program was modeled off a Brookings Institute report that identified Wisconsin as the top destination for a regional hub. I was proud to vote for and pass our Chips and Science Act, creating the Tech Hubs program and funding it. Since then, I've been doing everything in my power to make the case that Wisconsin is in fact the perfect place for a tech hub, just like the Brookings Report said. I made calls to the president's advisors. I sent letters to the president's cabinet I held meetings and roundtables to show Wisconsinites our potential, and I hosted tours to show why Wisconsin is deserving of a tech hub. That's because I know Wisconsin. We know Wisconsin. And today's announcement is proof of what we as Wisconsinites have long known. We have world-class universities, a second to none workforce, and a thriving private sector that will drive the next wave of American innovation. From researching new technologies and breakthroughs to the private investment and the skilled workers who will bring new products to market, Wisconsin's BioHealth Tech Hub will be an economic driver for the state. It will help 
entrepreneurs scale up their operations and grow. It will help expand lab space and support new research. It will support people at all educational levels to get the skills they need to land a job in this emerging sector. It will serve as a central hub for private and public partnerships in biotech to coordinate and collaborate so our, our state can drive innovation that benefits people around the world. This investment in the Badger State is projected to create more than 30,000 jobs and $9 billion of economic development in its first 10 years. These jobs will cross sectors, ranging from working on manufacturing or foundry floors to working in high-tech labs. The resources we are receiving will help align those entering the workforce, whether it be right after high school, a credentialing process, or higher education with employer demands. This investment will turbocharge our economy and bring opportunity far and wide. And the breakthroughs we're able to pioneer in personalized medicine and biohealth have the potential to revolutionize healthcare as we know it, helping people get the care they need earlier and faster. I've always said that in Wisconsin, we make things. Yes, we have our more iconic items like beer and brats, motorcycles and cheese, but we also make people's lives better. This investment will move the needle for how we approach and provide healthcare, helping people lead healthier lives. I am so proud of the work we've done together to get here, and I can't wait to see how this investment moves our state and our country forward. And now I'll pass it off to WEDC Secretary Missy Hughes, who has been an incredible leader in getting Wisconsin's consortium organized, putting forth a strong application, and helping earn this investment. Over to you, Missy. Thank you, Senator. And thank you for your incredible work in making this happen. I think this whole effort exemplifies the opportunity for state and federal government to lock arms and work together and all of that work that you did to talk to the leaders in Washington resulted in the tremendous celebration we're having today for Wisconsin. It is such a great day for Wisconsin. And we are so excited to be a part of the regional tech hub and the designation and the funding that we have received from the federal government. You know, as the Senator said, this partnership, this collaboration is an incredible thing. And in my eyes, it's really the Wisconsin idea come to life where you see partnership between industry and education and government really saying, what can we do to solve some of the real challenges that we see in healthcare today, that we see when a patient walks into doc a doctor's office and needs really specific, really talented and uh, efficient care. And this is what personalized medicine is going to provide. So this partnership, this Wisconsin idea come to life is going to have an incredible impact on Wisconsin and Wisconsinites and people all around the world. And that's why the federal government chose this as something critical for national security and something critical to move the whole country forward. Using Wisconsin's motto forward, we are part of that whole effort to look around the country and see what regions have a secret sauce that we can bring to life with a little bit of funding and a lot of effort from the people on the ground. So we are just so excited because we really see the tech hub as bringing together a whole system that we've created in Wisconsin of collaboration between students that are working in the research labs at UW-Madison or the Medical College of Wisconsin to industry and, and companies like Exact Sciences and Epic and GE Healthcare that are manufacturing incredible machinery that we see every day in hospitals and clinics around the world. And to our entrepreneurs who are taking the research that's coming, who are saying, what can we do with this? How can I start a business? How can I be really excited about this? And of course, to Wisconsin's workforce, who is ready to do the work, to build these incredible machines, to maintain these machines, and to show everyone how they do their best for the patients who need them. WEDC convened a group of Wisconsin leaders just about 18 months ago and said, we need to work together on this effort and we had the leaders agree that we wanted to go after this regional tech hub focused on bio, bio health. 
and we pass the baton to Lisa Johnson at BioForward, the CEO of BioForward, who carried that baton all the way to today. And I'm so pleased to be able to turn this over to her now so she can describe what this means for Wisconsin. Lisa? Great. Thanks a lot, Missy, and thank you, Senator Baldwin. Um, yes, I am the CEO of BioForward. We are the business association representing Wisconsin's uh, biohealth industry. We have offices in Madison, Milwaukee, and Eau Claire. Uh, we are also the lead consortium member uh, for the Wisconsin Biohealth Tech Hub. First, I'd like to thank uh, the Biden administration and Senator Baldwin for the passage of the Chips and Science Act that contained the Tech Hub's initiative. As Senator Baldwin was mentioning with the Brookings Institute, uh, not only did Wisconsin really rock in that, um, that report, but what I, I loved about that report was is that innovation happens everywhere. It doesn't just happen in the coast, it is happening everywhere. And that's why the U.S. needs to invest in other parts of the country. Um, what I think I am most thrilled about and what I'm so proud about is that Wisconsin, our, this industry, the Wisconsin Biohealth Tech Hub, um, really has been chosen to support U.S. efforts to protect national and, national and economic security and also delivering um, global competitiveness in the years to come. Uh, there were 192 applications, although I think the EDA was saying like 198, but it was one, I think it was 192 for phase one. Uh, we were then, and it was very competitive, and we were in there just charging ahead, kind of like Missy was saying, and we then were selected to be part of the 31 that then got to advance for the implement, implementation grants. And that's what we're talking about today is the phase two grants. Um, from that 31 now, it has, has come down to the 12. And that's in key technology areas that the EDA is investing in. And if you see their um, uh, press release, it talks about those different technology areas, whether it's in our area, the biotechnology precision and prediction, it could be on AI, minerals, uh, quantum computing. So it's really exciting that we get to be a part of this and that we can help lead the United States efforts, especially in this biotechnology area. So, we all lived through COVID and the supply chain disruptions and, and we need to have stable supply chains for our medical technologies. We need to have advances in personalized testing and treatment and care. And we need to do that from the United States and with our tech hub within Wisconsin. So this tech hub did not happen overnight. To lead these US strategic efforts, you need to have a strong foundation. This is decades of building this foundation from the ground up. Companies like Gilson and Promega, GE Healthcare, Epic, and more recently, Epic, uh, more recently, Exact Sciences. We have Rockwell Automation on here. We have precision manufacturers throughout this state. That's the foundation. That's what Wisconsin is delivering. That's why we were chosen to be one of the tech hubs to help lead the United States in these efforts. So. Getting back to that kind of biotechnology, that precision prediction. So what does that mean? Well, that's all around, and you heard this from both Missy and uh, uh, Senator Baldwin. It's personalized medicine. Well, what is personalized medicine? So it's a medical approach that really tailors treatments to individual characteristics of each patient by my genetic code versus your genetic code, your medical records, environment, lifestyle, so then doctors can create more effective and targeted tests, treatments, and then therapies. That's what we are focused on in this tech hub. So at the end of it, this method aims to improve then patient outcomes by customizing that care. This obviously is critically important to all of us, to all of our families, um, and very excited that Wisconsin can be part of leading that. So this area, um, personalized medicine, is expected to grow to a $500 billion market in the next tech, 10 years. So this tech hub is positioning Wisconsin to be a leader in the field. So just want to end with this statement is that we've watched other uh, areas of the country do fabulous R&D. They develop the products and then they ship them out to be manufactured elsewhere. Wisconsin's in, in a position with our proven supply chain. Again, Rockwell's on here. Plexus is part of our consortium, manufacturers everywhere. We're keeping that manufacturing in the US and we're keeping it in Wisconsin. And with that, I'm handing it over to Rockwell Automation, Valley Moretz. 
Lisa, thanks so much. Uh, and uh, Rockwell is thrilled to be a part of this tech hub. I think Wisconsin's a natural selection uh, with the uh, base of biotech and personalized medicine expertise, as well as, uh, as Lisa said, the generations of advanced manufacturing uh, know-how. We're adding to that base the technology that adds resilience and agility and sustainability to these processes by digitizing these processes. You hear a lot about concepts like creation of digital twins that add flexibility, being able to ensure that these processes are secure for cybersecurity reasons. And all of this will result in a more flexible approach to these cutting edge technologies that ultimately reduces the cost of being able to bring these things to the market and to benefit people and also allows us to get these things to scale, to be able to do them, to be able to serve all of the need that's out there. So we're thrilled to be a part of it. We have a strong fit, uh, us and the other members of the consortia. And uh, I wanna end by just thanking Senator Baldwin for her advocacy all the way through this process to this great day. And with that, I'll turn it over to Eli. Great, thanks Blake. Again, if you have any questions, please use the Q&A function in the chat and we will get back to you. The first question I have uh, is for Senator Baldwin, but Secretary Hughes, please chime in as well. Um, a few of the speakers mentioned the potential for jobs, I believe I heard up to 30,000. Uh, what kind of jobs are these and where will they be located? The uh, jobs, as I uh, was mentioning earlier, are going to really range from uh, jobs that you could secure right out of high school or with uh, a credential that you might earn at a local technical college or with an apprenticeship of some sort, uh, all the way to jobs that require a bachelor's or even uh, a higher education than that. Um, they will be jobs that will be in manufacturing settings. They will be jobs in foundry settings. There will be jobs in high-tech laboratories. And uh, the, um, you know, we don't know what breakthroughs we are going to uh, discover, what new technologies we are going to be able to uh, advance through this tech hub. But once we do establish these breakthroughs, we'll have to scale up. Um, you find a, a test that screens uh, accurately um, and can prevent certain uh, poor health outcomes. You want to get that available uh, and distributed in, in short order. And so just the synergy between all of these uh, collaborators and members of the consortium uh, that won this tech hub, uh, the, the, the array of jobs available are really significant and will uh, find a home for, for folks who maybe do want a job right out of high school or those who uh, are, um, uh, you know, working right now in university labs and want to uh, continue to apply their expertise to this project. Great. Thanks, Senator Baldwin. I will uh, now kick it to Blake. Blake, there are a few questions. Uh, what is Rockwell's specific role in the consortium um, and how and what will this mean for your business? Yeah, our role is uh, to help apply advanced manufacturing concepts to processes uh, and experiments that were previously confined uh, to really intensely manual processes in labs. It's not uh, that uh, there's going to be any less need for people. It's quite the contrary. But to be able to give people superpowers with the technology to be able to run experiments, to be able to analyze proofs of concept with promising new technology and to create test beds to be able to get them uh, up and running faster to uh, uh, decrease the time to value. That's really important in this. And also to take things that we've learned in other industries, uh, the application of artificial intelligence, for instance, to be able to try out different alternatives uh, to manufacturing processes uh, in this area and to do it virtually and at a greater speed than you would ever be able to get to by running physical product 
through uh, endless uh, endless experiments. Uh, so there's a lot of technology that we're seeing applied in industries uh, across the spectrum, uh, warehouse uh, automated manufacturing and automotive energy renewables that can be applied in this space. And we're looking forward to uh, being able to share that expertise. Wonderful. Thanks, Blake. Uh, Eli, we'll if, take this. If I, this is Missy. Please. Can I just add something? Um, just the senator made the point about the collaboration, and I just really want to emphasize that what Blake just described is such a terrific example of the collaboration opportunities we have, where a student or a professor in uh, the lab at UW Madison or at medical college won't have to wait months and months or even years before a company like Rockwell has a line of sight to their research, there will be direct connections now so that Blake's team can be helping that professor or that student really expand their mind about what the opportunities are. Same for GE Healthcare or for Accuray. All of these companies are now going to be able to see into the university and have those real connections and be able to bring their expertise to what's being developed in those laboratories. So uh, the, the senator started it. I'm going to keep it going. Collaboration is the key to this tech hub. And what Blake just described really exemplifies it. Great. Thanks, Secretary. Uh, senator Baldwin, um, how does the creation of this tech hub impact everyday Wisconsinites? And others, please feel free to chime in as well. Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, we're just talking about the opportunities with regard to jobs and uh, the resources that will help um, align uh, uh, the skills people need with what the businesses demand and, you know, be able to. Uh, so so it's going to have an overall really uh, uh, great impact on our economy in Wisconsin. But for the health of people in Wisconsin, and hopefully globally, because that ultimately is the goal, the breakthroughs, the new technologies will allow us to uh, treat um, individuals in a much more specific and unique and customized way uh, based on their own uh, genetics. Um, and in some cases, uh, uh, if we develop the appropriate screening, we may be able to even prevent the onset, you know, to identify people who might be at greater risk of developing uh, some sort of disease or cancer. And uh, so the, the goal is to greatly improve human health. And obviously that's going to impact uh, Wisconsinites because it's gonna be happening here. The breakthroughs are gonna happen here. The new, te new technologies are going to be developed here. And it's, um, it's very exciting. So both an economic and a uh, health impact right here in our state. And I will mention, um, cause I don't think it's come up uh, significantly yet, but one of the things embedded in the proposal is equity and making sure that the health benefits reach folks who may not have uh, uh, as easy access to health care as others. And the jobs get to folks who may not have uh, the same access to job opportunities and job training as others. Yeah, and, and just on that health equity part, um, if if you should be looking at the UW Center for Health Disparities Research. It is a leader in this country and they are an extremely important partner in this project, especially the UW Madison project. Um, and this is what Senator Baldwin is talking about. This would be obtaining data throughout the state. Healthcare systems throughout the state are participating in that project. We're bringing in tribal communities. I know in some of these projects, it's critically important. Um, everyone deserves a right to health care. Um, and especially our disadvantaged communities, our rural communities, um, this project is addressing a lot of those health inequities. Great. Thanks so much, Lisa. Thanks, Senator. Uh, and the final question, I think, uh, Lisa, you might be best equipped for this one. How will the decisions be made on funding and when will the first projects be funded? Yeah, so right now the EDA is holding on more information going into the details of the projects. 
Um, if right now we're just being given the, the amount of 49 million um, and then they'll be coming out with more specifics on each project. Those projects though do work directly with the EDA. So not all that comes into BioFor and then we separate it. They do work with these individual projects. However, then we have the overcompensating a governance project, the overall biohealth tech hub, so that we're all reporting together. And as we've heard the statement collaborating, we're all collaborating and making sure we're integrating all these projects. We also have the state funding of 7.5 million that we BioForward is working with WDC to obtain those funds that are providing matching funds to some of these projects to advance a lot of these initiatives. And that was a key, key piece of legislation to receive that funding. And we appreciate the bipartisan support in this state that provided that funding to, to, the, to this tech hub. Wonderful. Thanks, Lisa. Secretary Hughes, Lisa Blake, thank you so much for joining us today in your leadership on Tech Hub. Uh, for the reporters who have joined us today, our office will be sending around a recording of this meeting shortly to attendees. If you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to our office at press at baldwin.senate.gov. Otherwise, I hope everyone has a wonderful fourth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.